Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setchwe, a registered nurse in the UK, originally from Ghana. So today's video has been requested by Mr. Anthony Afre Bonsu in Ghana. So he's asked me to put something together about UK standard visitors visa applicant responsibility so as an applicant what you're supposed to do to get it right and also to talk briefly about what the decision makers on your visa are looking for this is very important because people go they apply they get refused and they are not really sure what they've done wrong so if you want to know more about this why not watch the video to the end Welcome back to the video so if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please remember to like subscribe and share so before I start I need to give my disclaimer I'm a registered nurse by profession I do not work for UK immigration service and I do not work for passports offices or I do not work for the home office so please this information is based on my own research on the UK government website. So you are able to go onto Google and search for the same information on the UK government site. So please bear with me. Anyway, so um, as I said in the beginning, we're going to be talking about what the case workers people who consider your application for UK standard visitors visa, what they are looking for. And whatever they are looking for, I would say in effect, is what your responsibilities are. So you have to meet what they are looking for. So all these things I'm going to be talking about, which is what the decision makers in the passport, not visa sessions are looking for, are your responsibilities as a visa applicant you have to make sure you meet their requirements so let's start so to start the process first of all you know you're going to be doing the application and all that so they look at that application you have submitted in order to make decisions so you have to make sure you answer the questions on the application form accurately as possible if you lie you're going to get caught out most often anyway so first of all what they are looking for is if the applicant meets the validity requirement another thing they're looking for is whether you have a genuine relationship with the third party who is living in the UK and if that third party in the UK actually has or is in breach of any immigration laws, can that third party provide support for the duration of the applicant's stay? So what that means genuine, generally is if you're being invited by an uncle, an auntie, a sister, a friend, First of all, they would be looking into whether you have actually got a genuine relationship with this person. Uh, secondly, they're going to be looking into that person's record as well to see whether they have actually been in breach of any UK immigration law. So if someone is inviting you and the person has done some kululu or some bad thing, unfortunately, it's going to affect your application. So you have to be careful who you ask for sponsorship if they're in the UK anyway and whether they would be able to support you because if they've put on the application form that they are going to support you once you're in the UK they are going to see whether that person can actually support you um, when you're here in the UK there are some additional requirements for children who are visiting or traveling unaccompanied so you have to look into that once again I need to clarify everybody's case is unique so it depends on what your application on your case is 
They also will be looking at whether if you have an approved destination status, that is if you are applying for a transit visa through UK. So if you are going to the US, US they would be checking whether you have got an approved um, destination status. Do you have a US visa? Because you can't come to UK and say you're going to US and you haven't got a US visa. So they will be looking into that. If you're coming for a private medical treatment, you're coming for or as an organ donor, you're coming to study for up to six months, you are an academic who is coming for more than six months, or you're coming for a work-related training or marriage or civil relationship, there might be some extra or additional requirements that you would need to provide. So um, they will be looking at some of those during the decision-making process. Now, the visa decision, what are they looking for? Their application, so when you apply, all the applications are actually allocated to decision makers based on the complexity, depending on the application time. So let's say you have actually submitted an application and you have not submitted any additional or evidence that is required because each section of the application would ask you to provide certain evidence. So if you've just completed an application form and you haven't submitted every, any evidence, then your application is going to be refused. Or if they look at your application, you've submitted some additional information, but some information is missing. Therefore, they cannot access your application in full. That is questionable. Or you have applied and you've included an evidence with irregularity. So you provided an evidence or you produce an evidence that are not quite right. There are some question marks on your evidence and they have to do further checks in order to confirm the validity of your, your documents or your evidence that you have provided. Or your previous application to the UK um, visa session has been refused. So they would want to know why did that happen? So all these things start ringing alarm bells, all these things start raising question marks about your visa application. Or if they also have other doubts about the evidence that you have provided, they will be looking into that. Or if you have, they have any concerns about modern slavery. So someone is inviting you and they suspect that this invitation, you might be used in modern slavery in all different sectors. So they look into all that. Whether they have any other reason for thinking that the requirements of the rules might not be met by you as an individual. So that's another thing. So you have to make sure you, you put all the dots together. You, if you're adding one plus one, you have to make sure the answer is two. If you're adding two plus two, you have to make sure when they look, you say the answer is four, it should be four. It shouldn't be three and a half. So they want accuracy and they want genuine people because what they don't want is someone coming in they suspect that, oh, you have come, you want to come and stay in the UK, you don't want to go back home. So they would be also assessing your personal circumstances. So one of the, re the ways they would be assessing your personal circumstances would be whether previous immigration history, so they'll be looking at your previous immigration history, your previous visits to the UK and other countries, the duration of your previous visits and whether it was longer than you have stated. So you say, oh, I'll be coming to the UK and I'll be staying for six weeks. And then you've stayed for four months. That one, you're in trouble. They would also be looking at your financial circumstances as well as personal, family, social, and economic background. So personal and social economic ties to your home country of residence will be looked into whether you're traveling without your family or whether there's something back there that would 
tie you to your country that you'll be looking forward to going back to because every applicant as soon as you put in your application they're thinking oh this person is coming from here they want to come and stay in UK and they don't want to go back home so you have to make sure as much as possible to prove on paper and with the evidence correct evidence to show that yes I've got a better place to go back to or I got a good environment to go back to I'm not coming to stay here and you know and then they also look at the number of times you have visited the UK and the pattern of travel over the last 12 months so let's say every you come three months, you go back. And then you go back for two weeks, you are back another three months. So they'll be looking at that and they want to see whether these short visits that you have made could be could amount to what they call a de facto uh, residence in the UK. So you've got money, you want to stay in the UK and you have got a long-term visa, maybe one year visa, and every three months you're coming and going. Or maybe you've got, um, three months visa, you've come, you've gone, and then after two weeks or three weeks you've applied, you've come and gone. So they will start thinking you're using the UK as a de facto res residence, which is like temporary residence, you're coming and staying, it's like, you know, so they look into your pattern to travel in and out of UK as well within the last 12 months. And they look at your travel and immigration history, they, they put that into consideration. And then reasons for doubting your application. Why? What are some of the reasons that someone who is sitting in the office and assessing your application would be doubting your application? One of them would be either you have few or no family ties to your home country. And they've realized that several members of your family are living in the UK. So if you haven't got any family back there and several members of your family are here in the UK, the question is, oh really, it seems like this person, this person wants to come and join their family here. There's nothing tying them back to their country of origin. So they start doubting your visa application. And then they also look at the way they can, uh, one of the reasons why your application can't be, can be doubted is application and sponsors, let's say applicant or the sponsor has attempted to deceive the home office in their previous application. So let's say I've invited you to come to the UK and I gave wrong information and you also or we both gave wrong information or one of us have given wrong information in the past so during the previous application if i lied or i deceived the home office or you deceived the home office they will start doubting whether this new application is actually genuine or not so it's understandable and also another reason why your application can be doubted is either whether there is any discrepancy between statements made by the applicant and the sponsor. So if we are both saying something different, if you say I'm inviting my friend or I'm inviting my sister and you applied and you say I'm visiting my aunt then there are question marks. So these are little, little mistakes that people make that leads to them having their visa applications declined. And as well, another reason your application can be um, doubted or there could be a question mark near your application could be it has not been possible for the Home Office to verify information provided by the applicant despite them attempting to get this information from you. So sometimes they haven't got the required information they want from you. They would contact you and ask you to provide more evidence. And if you've not been able to provide that evidence, I'm sorry, uh, your application is going to be doubted. And that, that is like a, a recipe for refusal of your UK visa, visitor's visa application. Also, another point here is that the information that has been provided 
or reason for visit stated are not credible. So sometimes they are looking at the credibility of some of the information you have provided or some of the reasons you have provided for making the application to have a standard UK visitor visa. So they look at the credibility of your reason why you want to visit. And if they feel that that is not credible, then there are doubts, they start having these question marks. Or you have arrived in the UK, you've got your visa, you've actually arrived at the UK and you are unlucky, one of the unlucky ones where they have searched your baggage at the border and it shows items that demonstrate or suggest that actually you're coming to search for a job in the UK. Some people do that. They are coming and they've printed all sorts of CVs and all sorts of things. You don't need to print CV. Keep it on your email. I'm just trying to talk like a Ghanaian anyway. <laughs> Keep it somewhere. Um, you have applied for a visitor's visa, so you are coming to visit. You're not coming to search for a job, so you do not need to. If you do that, they start thinking, actually, this person's intention of coming to the UK is not just for a visit, but to come and find a job and stay illegally. So that would start sounding alarm bells, and actually, you could be returned straight back to where you came from on the next available flight so you know and they look at um, maintenance and accommodation as per uh, the sponsor so if a sponsor says i'm going to be keeping you with my house you get to the border in the uk and they ask you oh where are you going to be um staying and then you've given a different address or something different you could be returned because what you have said on your application is different from what you are saying at the port of entry. So they would refuse you if you do not satisfy the caseworker or the requirement of the caseworker. If you don't meet the requirement, unfortunately, your application will be refused with no right to appeal, which is hard. So after paying money and doing all these things, then they would say, unfortunately, your visa or application has been declined or refused based and then with no um, right to appeal. Or if your application is based on human rights grounds, then you may be offered the right to appeal on human rights grounds. So these are some of the, these are little, 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 little things. These are what the things, what some of the things the caseworkers or the decision makers on your visitor's visa are looking for. So your responsibility as an individual is to make sure you meet the requirement, you meet what the case workers or the decision makers are looking for. And if you are able to prove with evidence that you have met all the requirement, you will get your visa. You don't need to go and see someone to pray for you to get so that your application will go through. You don't need to pay money for someone to do these things. You can easily do them yourself if you're able to go according to what is requested by the uh, home office or the application process. Each stage it tells you. I might do a video later about how to go through. I might do a few other things around this topic. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope I've answered your question, Anthony um, Afre Bonsu. If not, feel free to get back to me. If you have any topic, if you're out there in any part of the world, you enjoy this video, you have any topic you want me to talk about, I'll try my best. My specialty is in nursing, not in immigration, but 
I can do a research at least and I'll provide you with the information. And once again, this information is on the UK government website. You can easily find it yourself. So take care of yourselves. I wish you all the best. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please feel free. Just subscribe, like and share. And I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.